Hey, this is OXDF, and uh, today we're going to be talking about relic maps. This is the challenge that I made for the 2023 Cyber Apocalypse CTF, Cyber Apocalypse CTF from Hack the Box. Um, and I actually, I signed up to make a challenge without really knowing what I was going to do. And I remember specifically uh, listening to the Sands Internet Storm Center podcast, and they were talking about um, this new thing, OneNote uh, documents, this phishing documents showing up. And I thought, I got to go look at that. Um, and uh, that was late January of this year, and uh, within a week or so, I had made this challenge, and then I spent the last, next uh, month and a half worried that uh, Microsoft was going to patch this, um, which would be good for the world, but would make my challenge less exciting. Um, and uh, but I guess they haven't, which is, again, bad for the world. But um, anyway, this is a real malware sample that I found on uh, Malware Bazaar, and that was, you know, had done some, been some analysis done by Sands and other people. Um, and I modified it such that uh, it's benign. It can't hurt you now, but it's got, using all the same techniques to download and execute um, malicious things. So um, this is the kind of thing that if you work in a SOC or um, maybe even an IR team, if you're going to want to be able to run, if you run into this kind of thing, you need to be able to understand um, how to pull this apart, how to figure out what next steps to the right for detections, for blocks, et cetera. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so let's start by reading the challenge description. Um, basically, we've got an email link uh, claiming different information. Could it be a distraction, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the link goes to http relicmaps.htb colon um, relicmaps.1. Uh, the document is still live, and relicsmap.htb should be your Docker instance. So basically, um, I'm going to spawn a Docker down here, and my link is going to be http all of this relicmap. So we'll grab that and jump over here, and uh, we'll start. We'll start in Windows here. Um, we'll do this in Linux as well, but we can come over here and do uh, relic. I already lost track of the full URL. Uh, just slash relic map relic maps dot one relic maps dot one. And interestingly enough, uh, Chrome is this is this is not happening when I made it, but relic maps dot one is Chrome has blocked it. Let's see, can we get around that? Discard. Interesting. Let's see. We'll try it this way. Let's close Chrome and see if we can do it from PowerShell. Um, unexpected here. Let's go to desktop. Make their relic maps. CD relic. And we will do a wget on paste that in out file relic maps dot one. And that seemed to work okay. So we can come in here. Um, I always, we can, again, we can solve this in Linux. I always think it's not fun to look at like, what is the thing going on in here? Um, so we have a document and the map is here and it's classified maps and uh, it says click, click to view document. And you see what I'm hovering here? Um, we're getting ma maps underscore P-H-T-A dot O-N dot E-N-O um, inserted from blah, blah, blah. So like, that's interesting. Um, What's really going on here, and what what was what was the trend that we've been seeing with um, malicious one notes going around? It's like when you put a button here, uh, you can hide underneath the button uh, links to other embedded documents. So this button isn't actually doing anything. Um, let's see if I can click on it and get it out of the way. Yeah. So if we uh, move this button behind it, was just three copies of this thing, um, and it doesn't even show the file type. And that's actually because there's a there's a uh, let's see if we can let's see let's can we save this save this as um, in our relic maps.htb thing, we'll call this, uh, so you can see right here, it's called maps path one. Um, that's kind of interesting. It's, that's, is it another one? Is it another one note? So are we clicking to download another one note file? Um, but actually if we come here and look, you can see it's actually maps underscore P some weird character eno.hta. And what this is, is actually the character that says switch the left or right parsing. And so it's all of a sudden making this thing with actually an HTA file look like it's a OneNote file. Um, and that was just, again, this is from a real malware sample that I found on Malware Bazaar um, right when they started getting really popular. And uh, this was a trick they were using. So um, this is something you'll see in the real world. Um, we've got this HTA file from here. We can also go over into our Linux VM. Let's see, let me grab this and grab this here and I'm here into a wget on that same thing. It downloads a file. Let's see, do we have anything here? Okay, so file relic maps that one. Um, that looks completely fine. 
And if we want to go from here, we can say something like, um, this is where you'll have to go to get DDA Stevens uh, tools. Um, so let's see, do we have, uh, I don't know if I have it on here. Actually, you know what? I think it's actually in his uh, beta tools. I don't know if he's moved it over yet. So let's see. Um, DDA Stevens, I'm misspelling it, but that's okay. One dump dot. See if we can find this. Oh, I need, got, need to turn my proxy off. Here it is. Can grab this and we can just uh, do raw. We'll just grab this script right here and w get it down here when we got it. Okay, so we can do Python, one dump, uh, and then we just need to pass it relic map one. And we can see what it's got in there. So three of these things are PNGs. Um, we can see the images. And then the other attachment here is this uh, the second one, which we don't can't really see what it is. So we can do the same thing. Um, but now we can do dash S2 because we want to get stream two, see what that is. And we can see we get kind of a hex interpretation of it. Um, and very clearly we can see this is an HTA application. Um, so we're getting the same kind of HTA here. Um, and we can do, if I remember correctly, I think it's a dash D to dump. And that, yeah, we get the actual files. We can save, you know, to call this like uh, stage one dot HTA, and we get it there. Um, let's jump back. We have we've got the HTA now in both cases. Let's see. We'll just do code run over in here and take a look at this HTA. Um, so an HTA application right here really just has VB script inside of this XML. So if we want to, we can. Uh, See, what if we save as instead of doing do BB like that? It might give us some nice, yeah, there we go. Syntax highlighting. And we can then just delete the uh, HTML. And now we have our thing. So uh, there's a function WMI exec, which is going to create an object and eventually run the command line it's given. Um, dupe, duke pot hex, I don't know what this is. Um, but it's going to create a object. Um, execute command, execute command async. Um, and so that down here is this thing, which is going to call WMI exec on the path given. Um, so asynchronously going to run that thing. And so there's really two things going on here. There's an invoke web request to get, uh, let's see if we can turn on line wrap. Uh, invoke web request on relic maps HTTP, so the same thing, uh, soft upload soft top secret maps one, and it's going to write that down here. Um, now it's going to write to temp, and then it's going to be ts map one. That's a demo. That's a, uh, a decoy document basically. So when you click on the button, you feel like you got something happening. Uh, and then in the background, it's also going to run um, downloading this window.bat, and it's going to save that into system into temp as system32.bat, and it's going to run it. Um, so that's definitely where we want to focus our, our efforts on next. Um, if we do go into our Windows VM and update our host files to point at relic maps, um, and our port to point to, the, and, and put the port into these links, we can, this will actually work and download, but um, it's kind of hard when you're getting your own port. Uh, if the system can't know that. So um, what we really want to do is we want to get a hold of this right here. Let's take a look at this, copy that. Um, and I'm gonna go actually go back to Windows for this. Let's see, can we, do we paste here? Oop, and we do not, so let's see. Grab this right here. Copy, or pasting. Okay, that looks good. In fact, we just need this part right here. Copy that, go over to Windows. Go into PowerShell, w get, oh, we got it, out file window dot And oh, we don't have that thing yet. We need to replace relic map dot HDB with this right here. We get it. And we can notepad plus plus window dot bat and see what we got. So. We, we have a bat file here. Um, echo op at the beginning is fine. So we're going to set um, 
EF LP as to be set. And so then this is going to call set on this thing is equal to WS, this thing is equal to slash, uh, and so on, setting a bunch of variables. So it's setting something else as set, using it, setting something else as set, using it. Um, but this is all just doing that. Um, Line 108 here, we have a long line with just a bunch of base64, it looks like. Uh, then we have a bunch more setting of variables here. Setting, setting, setting. Until we get to the bottom. And now we're calling very these strings made entirely out of var these variables that we've that we've set. Um, and then we exit. So the, the simplest way to fix this is we feel pretty confident that these things are all just commands, right? And we're going to run those commands. So if instead of running them, we just put echo in front of them. Uh, we don't we don't need to clear the screen. Get rid of that. We'll put echo in front of there. And we'll put echo in front of there. And now we're going to see the commands that would have run. Um, so let's save this. We come up here, and now we can do window.bat. We can see our we, there's, there's three lines, right? So the first thing we're going to do with this top line is copy C Windows System 32 PowerShell into the current directory uh, window dot, make that window window dot bat dot exe. Now we're going to go into that directory, and then we're going to uh, call what is, we know is PowerShell, no profile window style blah blah blah, uh, with this stuff right here. And so let's grab this. I have VS Code here. Um, A lot easier than doing one uh, one one note or note notepad plus plus. Um, we'll open a folder. Right. I'm selecting. Okay. Trust the authors, uh, and we will create a file and call it like pia uh, stage one stage two dot ps one maybe. This is what's going to run, and. One long line. Let's see. Can we um, there? Oh yeah. So here goes. So we can control H, and in here we want to find semicolon, and we want to replace it with Shift Enter to make it a new line. And there's 25 of those, and we're just going to replace all. And now we have code that looks okay. Um, so we're going to get a file, and we can, in PowerShell, figure out exactly what this is right here. So grab this. It's going to just be, I think it's just making it backwards, honestly. Let's come over here and just run it. So read all text. So it's going to read all text on relic map on the bat file, splitting on the new line. So we're going to get an array with, both, with the lines of this file, the file that we just came, that we're actually running from. Um, and then we're going to loop over each line. And if the line starts with colon colon, which is that one long line of base64, uh, then we're going to set, let's see, what is this? Oh, the line dot substring three. So we're going to skip forward the, the colon colon space and basically get the base64 and save it in here. Um, so we can actually, you know, if we come here and we, let's see, change all occurrences to, um, Base 64 blob. So then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna system convert. And what do you want to say? This is we can well you can see from base 64 grid backwards. Um, so we have, we're gonna convert that into here, and then we're going to cryptography. We're going to decrypt uh, cipher AES CBC um, with a key and an IV, and we're gonna decrypt. Okay, so we're gonna base, we're gonna take this, we're gonna base 64 to code it and store it, store it in here. So we'll call this like, let's refactor this as well. Change all occurrences, uh, decoded, encrypt, encrypted. And then that, well, now we're gonna generate an object here to take that and then we're gonna, this is going to be decoded, encrypted is going to become a transform final block. Here's so we're actually doing the decrypting um, with the decryptor. Um, so we're actually decrypting it here. So this is going to be, now it becomes the, the decrypted stuff. Now we're going to create a memory stream with uh, gzip decompression in decompress mode um, with the object. 
And then eventually here we're going to call, this is load. We're going to load the assembly of deep within here into and invoke it. Um, find the entry point and invoke it. We're going to run the executable that we de decoded and decrypted. So if, if we understand all of that, we can come back here and say, push my window up back. We need that line, that one long line. Here we go. This. So we need this. And we're going to come over here and jump into CyberChef. Seems like we, we could probably just do this in, 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 in uh, PowerShell because we've got the code to do it. But let's just, just come here. We're going to put that base64 in here. Uh, we're going to do a from base64. We know that. And the next thing we're going to do is AES decrypt. And we need to get back here to stage two. Uh, this is from basic, this is the base64 key. So the key is in base64. We don't have to decode it. We can just put it in here. And the IV is also base64. So come here and put that there. Make this base64. And, oh, that's the problem. Our input is not in hex. Our input is in raw. Um, that is our data. Okay, so we go there. Um, now we need to do a gzip decompress. We can come up here and we can gun zip. And what's cool is right now we have an MZ file. So we've got this, you can see it's MZ, so that's a Windows executable and it cannot be run in DOS mode. That's a Windows executable. Um, we're gonna save this output to a file. And we're gonna call it uh, rm.exe for relic maps. And I don't, where did this go? Downloads, let's cut that. And ooh, too much stuff open. Put it in here. And so now we have an, ex we have an executable. Um, this, because of the way it's being loaded, we can tell it's actually a .NET assembly. Um, so we can use dnspy to check out what's going on with this executable. And we will just need to, let's see, come up here, let's close this. Grab the executable, drag it in here, and we get relic maps right here. We can come down here and find the program main. Um, and so it's doing a very similar thing. We can already see. So it's going to do a DNS get host address. Um, it's going to uh, start doing C2, but you can see right here the text is there's our flag. So we've actually found it. I think the point of this is um, this is this is what the malware was actually doing, but uh, we didn't want to go into much more. This is not a reversing challenge. It's a forensic challenge. So um, we're just going to stop right here and give you the flag. So um, with that, uh, this is, again, a piece of real malware from the real world um, that I took and just changed out. I used the same techniques all the way through, but just, you know, put, replaced the domains with relicmaps.htb and, uh, you know, the mal anything malicious or something that won't actually hurt you so that it doesn't do any damage. But, you know, this is real stuff. If you're working in a sock, this is the kind of stuff you're going to run into. So um, being able to understand exactly what it's doing, what it's downloading from, which URLs are hit, where you're going to go put rules at the firewall, what blocks you want to put in place, what, what alerts you want to trigger in your SIM, um, this kind of stuff is useful. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this and uh, talk to you next time. Bye.